Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat important discovery in regards to, I guess, everything in the universe. The universe seems to be vibrating. As you might have discovered from one of the older videos that should be in the description and that we've discussed in 2023. And specifically this is the observations of gravitational waves. But not really the same types of waves as we usually observe when two smaller black holes collide creating a kind of a chirp. Here we're talking about a very different type of a wave that seems to be more or less constant and seems to have existed, well, possibly forever. And so in this video, let's actually discuss some of these new discoveries and new confirmations about this, possibly talk about what's causing this and also what's very likely not causing this, and I guess what all of this means for us as humans. And by the way, what you're looking at right here is a simulation of a pulsar or a neutron star whose existence was crucial in discovering all of this. We'll talk about this in a few minutes. But I guess first, just a little bit of history. Everything we know about gravitational waves technically changed in 2015, mostly because we finally had a physical confirmation that gravitational waves exist and are definitely produced by colliding objects such as neutron stars and black holes. But this only happened in 2015. Some of the older videos on the channel, somewhere right there, explore this a little bit more. But the idea of gravitational waves does not limit itself to collision of smaller black holes and neutron stars. Gravitational waves exist everywhere and at all times. Or at least that's the theory behind this. And so back in the 70s, some of the theoretical physicists started to propose various ideas on how we can detect gravitational waves by using the idea of interferometry which could be done by observing tiny changes of some kind of a measurement by looking at various objects at a distance. Eventually this of course led to various facilities like LIGO, which then detected gravitational waves and proved their existence. But initially this was not about neutron stars and black holes, this was about a much larger gravitational wave, sometimes referred to as the background gravitational wave. A much larger wave and potentially much higher in amplitude generated through the interaction of massive objects, such as supermassive black holes, possibly dark matter, and possibly more exotic objects, such as cosmic strings. Something you can learn more about in some of the videos in the description. But the question is, how would you actually look for these large waves, and how would you prove their existence? And while well, back in the 60s, the researchers discovered something else that could technically help us with all of this. Pulsars, and specifically millisecond pulsars. Pulsars that spin hundreds and even thousands of times per second, with the average period being about 10 milliseconds or even less. And so by taking a few of these millisecond pulsars located everywhere in the Milky Way with very specific rotation periods, we can then basically measure minute deviation in their extremely precise rotations. Millisecond pulsars are known to be very stable. They don't generally have star quakes or glitches and are technically even more accurate time predictors than atomic clocks. Fun fact, the famous golden disk on the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 features what's known as the pulsar map, basically showing the location of the solar system by using several famous pulsars that were known back in the 70s. And so in essence, by using this principle, or by basically using this pulsar map, it then becomes possible to measure minute deviations of space-time that could potentially happen because of gravitational waves. Ok, this might sound super complicated, I guess let's use a more earthly example. Let's take a boat or a ship. So imagine some kind of a boat on the ocean, and here you basically are trying to find out if there are any, I guess, tsunami waves coming toward you. Now normally, if you're in the ocean, you're not going to feel tsunami as it passes over you, because the wavelength of a typical tsunami is in hundreds of kilometers. But you might be able to detect it if you look at different distant objects such as different lighthouses and by constantly observing them manage to find slight deviations as the tsunami passes over you. Now this is a gross simplification, but in essence that's the idea that's used here. The boat is planet Earth, these lighthouses are pulsars, and the tsunami wave is that background gravitational wave that the scientists are trying to discover. And though this might sound really complicated, the initial discoveries of something going on here were actually made in 2016. And this was achieved by using the first such survey or the first such technique known as the Pulsar Timing Array, PTA. But this was obviously very preliminary. Nevertheless, this actually started a major research in the last decade. More and more teams started to join and started to conduct their own observations. 
And as of 2024, we have at least six separate surveys. The first one was the Parks Pulsar Timing Array, which began collecting data in 2005. Then we have the European Pulsar Timing Array, the North American Nanograph, the Indian and the Chinese Pulsar Arrays, and lastly the South African Meerkat. And these basically include some of the biggest radio telescopes in existence, with many of these observations being extremely accurate. But all essentially focused on one thing – measuring the timing of various pulsars, millisecond pulsars, and basically trying to calculate minute deviations from the known period. Here it's normally measured in nanoseconds. But the biggest breakthrough was in 2023. That video in the description talks about this more, but essentially the combination of the North American and the European pulsar arrays combined approximately 15 years of observations, discovering very strong evidence for the existence of this unusual background gravitational wave. Although technically it's not a single wave, it's more of a superimposed gravity wave that's very likely formed by different events combined into one. Not so different from what we usually observe on the surface of a typical ocean. And naturally this discovery presented us with a very important opportunity. Just like the cosmic microwave background radiation, here we had the opportunity to study the universe by discovering some of the earliest waves coming from anywhere. Since gravitational waves pass through everything without really interacting with anything, these waves could have been generated right after the Big Bang, naturally making this a super important study. But because this is so groundbreaking and because it potentially has so many implications, naturally we need more confirmations and more evidence. And that's exactly what we got now. A second release by the European Pulsar Timing Array, using the second, most recent dataset, that was actually joined by the Indian Pulsar Timing Array that provided very similar results. All of this released in May of 2024, or basically a year after that last release. And all of these individual observations are pointing at the same result. Every one of these pulsar observations suggests the existence of long wavelength gravitational waves produced by some kind of a mysterious signal. In this case, this is actually based on four different datasets, with the evidence being overwhelming. And so this definitely proves the existence of these waves pretty much all around us at all times, even right now. But naturally, we don't really feel them, mostly because it's a gravitational waves, so you're not going to feel it either way, but also because they're not really that large in amplitude. They might obviously shift our atoms here and there, but not by much. But one question that has been so far difficult to answer is, ok, but what's actually causing this? Based on previous studies, the assumptions here have been quite diverse. For example, one assumption was the mysterious cosmic strings, extremely massive cracks in the space-time itself that have been proposed to exist and could potentially cause these waves. Or maybe, orbital interactions between supermassive black hole binaries in various galaxies as they collide and as they're about to merge. Or maybe all of this was the result of the mysterious inflation that happened right after the Big Bang. Or some other unusual phase shift in the early universe that transformed the universe from something else into what it is today. Or maybe, as always, the mysterious dark matter. In this case, what's known as the ultralight dark matter, such as maybe some kind of an axion or neutrino. Here, by having a lot of them and oscillating in a certain way, they would also produce gravitational waves. And though at the moment it's still kind of difficult to pinpoint the exact source, here by combining data from all of these pulsar timing arrays, the researchers were able to kind of come to one potential conclusion while also discarding a few other ones. And so here the data suggests that it's very likely not dark matter. Or at least not ultralight dark matter, as predicted by some of the studies. It's also unlikely to be different types of exotic stuff like cosmic strings because the overall wavelength and the amplitude doesn't seem to match, but it does match supermassive black holes. And so right now the scientists believe that the signal here is almost certainly caused by inspiraling supermassive black holes in various interacting and colliding galaxies such as the famous antenna galaxies that are slowly merging and whose black holes eventually will probably have to merge as well. And because here the amplitude is a little bit higher than expected, right now massive black holes seem to be the best explanation. And so here by observing 68 pulsars for approximately 15 years, we essentially have an almost direct confirmation for the existence of a bunch of supermassive black hole binaries all around us. And the binaries that are most likely going to combine at some point. 
But because here we're talking about waves with wavelengths in thousands of light years, these events are going to last for millions and even billions of years, and so none of these black holes are going to be combining anytime soon. But all of this connects to one important mystery known as the final parsec problem. One of the videos in the description talks about this a little bit more, but this basically confirms that supermassive black holes definitely interact and definitely reach a point where they start producing gravitational waves. But whether they actually combine at the end is not a question we can answer yet. I mean, technically they have to, we just don't have enough evidence. But obviously because this is such a groundbreaking discovery, this is not the end yet. We're going to be getting even more observations by 2025, with all six pulsar timing array observatories very likely releasing even more data in the next year. And so by combining measurements from all of these collaborations, we might be able to pinpoint the exact source a little bit better. At the moment, it's still kind of a guesswork, we just know these waves definitely exist, and the evidence so far is extremely strong, but the explanations right now are very preliminary. And so once we know a little bit more, or once someone discovers exactly what's happening here, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. But until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.